Hi, hi, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Pixies and the host of the Sparkle and Thrive podcast. And I'm really excited about our guest this morning, Jane Hyde, who came in as a teaching assistant, I believe, into our world uh, and realized that there wasn't much of a career trajectory for her there and also realized she was extremely creative and leaned into photography, something she's always loved and is now a sought after brand photographer who works with clients all over the world, as well as running a job, uh, quite a big marketing job, digital marketing job at a local hospice. So Jane, welcome. Thank you for coming here today on being on the podcast. You know, I remember... I remember when I met you in real life for the first time, right? You, yep. were, uh, you were actually one of our first online students. And then yep. we invited you to come and spend a day with us to do some filming and everything else to promote our online program. Uh, so I met you in real life. And I remember your sort of, is this going to work uh, feeling? You know, like uh, you, you, you were taking a punt, you were on us. And was it going to work for you? And what do you think? Has it all worked out? Oh, I think it's been absolutely amazing. I think anybody that sees anything I post on any social media knows how I feel about tech pixies. Um, yeah, no, it's been incredible. I think that day was um, a real big step out of my comfort zone. Um, and it was over an hour's drive to get to you for that and to walk into a room full of people. I didn't know. It, but it was um, it was one of those special, you know, real moments in my life where I know that I made the right decision. And as scary as it was, it's made such a difference. Um, yeah, incredible difference, really. Well, let's talk about where you were and then where you are. But what, what was life like when you found Tech Pixies pre social media training, all that good stuff? What was like? What was life like? What were you doing? Um, well, I um, when I had my children, uh, I've got a 19-year-old and a 17-year-old nearly. Um, I given up work and uh, not given up work, but I'd changed career so that I could be at home with them. So I turned into I'd gone into childminding, um, and then I'd stepped into education. So I got a teaching assistant position at a local school, which I loved. Um, enabled so that I could be there for the boys when they needed me so I could do all the you know all the stuff that we have to do school commitments and I'd recently got divorced as well so things were all up in the air and I realized very much that financially everything was on me I had an awful lot of encouragement from the headmistress at the school I was at to do my teacher training it was something I looked into I'm glad I wasn't able to do it um, because this opened up tech pixies to me I stumbled across this sort of social media stuff, just sort of the normal evening of trolling through all the social media screens um, and got in touch with you guys um, and sort of explored the options that I could do the training alongside being a single mum at home, full time job, two boys that needed me. Um, and sort of the yeah, it was the trajectory that definitely open the world to me I think it's probably a good way of putting it um I was very much in the school mum headspace teaching assistant you know lesson planning playground duty all that sort of stuff um and tech pixies came along and was so supportive and so informative that I actually built my confidence not just in social media but my confidence in general you know as a person um yeah, I think one of the things that I talk about all the time is the word yet. You know, I don't know that yet, but I can learn it. I don't know that yet, but I can do that. Um, and it's those, um, what, was the, what would we call them, ants, you know, the um, things that you're most worried about doing or most scared about doing. Tech Pixie sort of gives you the tools in which to move past those and push through them. So, yeah, it's been invaluable for life in general, not just social media. Well, and interestingly enough, now you are a digital marketer, you know, that's your day job now. And you went yeah. from being a teaching assistant to a digital marketer, which is a big career shift. And uh, a big yeah. part of that was the social media training you had. But also you had and have a passion for photography. And I remember early on sort of having conversations about how that could become a career and what that could look like. Uh, and yeah. so let's talk about that because you've done some incredible work in the brand photography space. So yeah, yeah. Tell, tell us how you went from social media to brand photography as well. Yeah, well, to be quite honest, photography has always been a passion of mine. I've always loved it from the first sort of Kodak flip up camera that you had, where you had to plug the um, the light bulb, you know, the flash into the top of it. Um, but it's never been something that I've seen that I could make money doing if I wasn't a wedding photographer. And I 
to be quite honest, I've done a couple of weddings and they terrify me. But I used to, as a teaching assistant, I used to do photography classes with the children after school. So it's one of the after school clubs. And it sort of really, you know, it makes me realise how much I love it. Um, and conversations with you about maybe not necessarily being ready for the social media thing because I didn't feel I had the experience. But the photography skills, um, I'd done courses, but it was just a hobby. It was never going to make me money. And it was, I think it was realising the, the existence of brand photography and that people need business photography for their websites and for their social media content. That was something that came out of the course, really. Um, it made me realise that it's something I can do. Uh, and it's something that I've realised is such a passion of mine. I love it so much. I wish I could do more. Um, every time I come off a shoot, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, and I, one of my, I've got a friend who I've met through Tech Pixies, Kate Banks. Um, she's a coach, and she's been helping me a lot. But she know she always says to me, "You need to bottle how you feel." during and after a shoot because it's just infectious and it is and I've started recording videos now when I've done a shoot because it's just like ah oh my god <laughs> um yeah I love it so much and it really it inspires me to keep going even when it's sort of difficult and when I'm balancing everything else well and two things that I love about this number one it's no longer hot but you actually make money doing it and you make good money doing it so that's the cool yeah. part the other thing about that which I think is so cool is, um, you know, obviously that you're doing what you love and, and the skills that you have carry into your other role as well, because you can literally get much so. and do all the yeah. photography. Um, so, you know, it's whenever someone's doing something that they love, they just light up as you do. And yeah. I just think that is so cool. It just is one of my favorite parts. But now you decided to switch to being a brand photographer and then boom, the pandemic hit. But what yes. I love... <laughs> was you did not let that stop you and everything is figure outable. So tell people about the package you offered during the COVID years that really <laughs> made you and, and in many ways you carry on doing today, even though you could meet in real life, but you know, th the time to get to a yeah. client might be a long time. They might be in a different country. So you've taken, you've taken photos of people in New York, in Switzerland, in the UK, where else am I missing? Uh, Portugal, Jersey, um, Oh, gosh. I'm trying to remember all of, all of them now. But never had to get on a plane. So tell people how you no. did it. Scotland. <laughs> okay. It was one of those um, one of those moments where, you know, as a in-person photographer, I have to be in the same vicinity as you and I have to come to you or you come to me. So when the pandemic hit, you know, that became completely impossible. Um, and there was something that was sort of talked about really early on called FaceTime photography. I don't have an iPhone, so I couldn't do that. Um, and so I just sort of experimented with different ways of doing it, couldn't get it to work. And then this amazing piece of software came out that is it's basically an app and it allows me to, you download the app to your phone, allows me access to your phone. You have to give me permission, so I can't just come on. Um, but it means I can control the camera on your phone. I can do the lighting, the exposure, the focus, all from my studio, wherever in the world you are. To be quite honest, the only thing we have to figure out is time zones. Um, but it's, it's, incre it's incredible. And the, the quality of the photographs, if you've seen any of my stuff online, you'll see it's amazing. It's fantastic for... Um, content creation so if you just want to update something or you've got a new haircut and you just need to sort of update your profile picture it's a very easy way to do it the the actual process is quite straightforward but one of the things that I think I take away from it mostly is a lot of us women are very time poor <laughs> we always have to be there for other things we always have other things we have to do so if we know you know if we work together I know that I within an hour we can get you know a good stock of images for you to use on your social media um, and then you can go to the school run or you can go and look you know do the other responsibilities that you have it's it's so um, succinct and easy to do and straightforward and it doesn't take up all your day the only thing that people say when they do a virtual shoot with me is they have to tidy up their house <laughs> but um it's quite good because it could be anywhere ultimately it doesn't have to be your house if you've got you know if you hire a nice room or a nice um house or something we can do a shoot virtually from there but it's just all it needs is a good internet connection and then we're done so yeah it's amazing and it has has made a huge difference to my business it gives me much more flexibility as well as the ladies that I shoot photos with I was so um so excited when I got a shoot in New York I was very disappointed I couldn't actually go. <laughs>
<laughs> but that was amazing just to say that I've done a, a shoot in New York is incredible and certainly not something I'd have ever dreamed of before well, that, I started. And that's what I want to go back to. Like, I want to go back to Jane, who's making the decision to invest in a social media training program. She's sitting there as a TA. She, like, doesn't see a future there. I mean, it, there, it's not the future that you were really excited about and it didn't quite work no. with schedule or anything else. If I could take this video now and play it back to Jane, you know, I don't know how long we've been working together, four years, five years. If I could go well, and play- 2018, I think it was, I joined. Yeah. So five <laughs> years, we've known each other for five years. If I could play this video five years ago, you know, to Jane then, what would you, what would you say? What would, would you believe it? Yeah, no, I, d I don't know that I would believe it. Um, I'd feel very positive about it, but I think Tech Pixies came along in my life when there was a huge changes. Um, I'd I'd lost my father um, a year before, year or so before, um, and then I did, then I got divorced, and then I had two little boys that were that needed their mum, and I was in a very supportive environment in a school. They were absolutely wonderful, but it wasn't it wasn't bringing me enough money, and it wasn't allowing me to to grow as a person um and I think it's made me realize how much I've always I always want to do better I always want to strive to do more but having tech pixies um yeah I don't know how I'd explain it to myself to be quite honest looking back I mean I was watching a video that I did for you just sort of in between the pandemics and it was just like even then is incredible <laughs> the difference um well yeah, that was when you were just starting out on your photography journey and I asked you to come and do all the photography yeah. for our um you, for another uh, filming thing we were doing yeah. which you did a great job and it was so much fun and you know that's I mean I think that's what I love about Tech Pixies like it's a safe space to try yes, stuff out and do things and yeah. you know you're, you're going to be fully supported in fact many of your first clients from the branding perspective and many of the continued clients are Tech Pixies and that's yeah. I think what also speaks to the fact that it's not just a course, it's a community. Um, Completely. And I mean, I when I started the virtual photography, I couldn't just go straight out and have paying clients for that because I had to figure it out. And so it was a real like it was a real case of my tech pixies cohort. Right, ladies, I need some guinea pigs. <laughs> and, you know, and everyone sort of rallied and I did different shoots with different people just to figure out the best lighting, the best positioning. And, and again, I've got some amazing photographs from that. But I think throughout throughout the whole journey, since I found tech pixies, the tech pixies as a community have been there for me. <laughs> yeah, have been very much part of my my life and my support network I mean I would mentioned Kate before Kate was my um, accountability partner in one of our very early days of um, our online calls and I still meet up with Kate and we still talk probably every couple of weeks about how things are going in her business how things are going in mine and we sort of you know jolly each other along and it's just so nice because I think one of the problems you have in your location is if you if you're in an environment where nobody else is doing that or nobody else is striving to do better or wanting to improve it's very hard you know I don't have anybody really in my groups that is doing anything like what I'm trying to do or anything like that not that that's a negative but it's yeah. you don't have someone to talk to about it whereas I can phone Kate and go oh my god this was amazing <laughs> she's like yay <laughs> yeah you feel like you've got a whole cheerleader gang for you because they get it you know you've gone through it and they understand what it takes to get to that level you know people around you families can be supportive and they, they're amazing but they just haven't been through the process they don't get it so yeah having... there, is a, there is a process right you got to trust the process yeah. but one of the one of the first things we teach we do two major things in the boot camp which then carries on also to our other trainings but the very first thing we do is you know the power of yet um you yeah. know which which is so important you know i don't know how to do this yeah. yet and then yeah. the second thing that we teach is the vision board. Now let's talk about your vision board because I mean, we're like five <laughs> years later. So what was on that very first vision board? Cause I know you've done a couple since, but what was the, on the yeah. very first vision board? I, I love my vision boards, you know, and it sounds, sometimes you think it sounds really cheesy, but it's just having that visual in front of you is, it's just been, I mean, my screensaver on my phone is a new vision board. You know, the background is all the different things that I want to try and achieve. Um, my very first vision board was do more photography, tick. Um, 
read more, which I've pretty much just started doing, which has been something that's been sort of on the back burner for a long time. So it's really nice to get back into that. But um, the biggest thing, and I think you all appreciate this, is my dog. <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, I lost my dog just after the divorce. Um, and, you know, it wasn't the right time to bring a new life, you know, a new thing that needed me into the, the family network. And it was something that I've always wanted because I've always had a dog in my life in some way or another. So, um, yeah, I had a picture of a golden retriever on my vision board. And now I have my Wilson, who's a very soppy um, golden retriever who I adore. Um, but it's things like that. But I knew I wanted it, but it wasn't sort of at the forefront of my mind. But by doing the vision board, it made me realize, yeah, and actually, this is quite important to me. And it helps you, it really helps you sort of scroll down what the important things are. Well, and it was great because when we vision boarded a golden retriever, my daughter, you know, really wanted one for her whole life. And finally on her 13th yeah. birthday, it was like, come on guys, it's my big birthday. It's time. You know, I've been asking for this for 13 years, which she has to be fair, pretty much since yeah. she could speak, she was saying the word dog. But uh, of course I, I, you and I have the same type of golden retriever and you were so sweet because you... I, we were messaging back and forth and then you sent me a golden retriever book, which my husband read, like we, you know, so it was just so great, but it's, I mean, there's a lot of dog lovers in the tech Peaks community, but we also have, we also have people in the tech, tech Peaks community have ducks and gerbils and yeah. hamsters and <laughs> horses and miniature horses and goats, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and sheep and there's all sorts of animals. Um, but, you know, I think that's the point is, you know, you, it's, uh, and it's a community is, is, you know, it's a place that's safe. It's a place that's supportive. Um, and it, the tech Weeks community, it's a place where you have partners in believing people who believe in what you want to achieve and believe it's possible yeah. for you, no matter what it is. And they're not going to put their limitations on you. And, mm -hmm. and the funny thing is, is as people start to understand that and lean into that, then gradually over time, like you said, you get these bigger visions and these, these, these bigger things you want to go for, because, you know, we are, part of an ever expanding universe and why we would think that we don't want to ever expand is so <laughs> strange considering that we're in an environment that's ever expanding around us. Yeah. Um, you know, but we have to take care of ourselves in the environment. That's for sure. Otherwise, you know, we run out of gas and the environment runs out of gas. But the yeah. fact is, is if we're taking care of ourselves and if we are taking steps every day towards something we would love, we're going to make progress. You know, you don't get to not yeah make pro you know you don't you don't get to not breathe uh, you know every day you know it's, it's one of those things your heart's beating your breath is coming in and out of your lungs and so 365 days from now you're either going to create a life you love or you're going to create a life you know by default and one that you're not so hot about so what i love about you yeah. is that your whole life the last five years has been shaped by your dreams your visions you stayed connected to the community you've you know now you've got this job in digital marketing so tell us about Tell us about the job you're doing now, because I think that'll be interesting to people. You know, the brand photography yeah. is you're making money doing that. You love doing that. You do that in every spare minute that you can. You're That's what you're doing. <laughs> but you also have a, a job where you've got, you know, stable, steady income that you can rely on and trust that, you know, funds your lifestyle along with the other the other business. So you've still got two businesses yeah. going on here or a job and a business, which is you yeah. know, a wonderful thing, you know, to have that stability, especially <laughs> in this economy. Right. Have the stability. Yeah. <laughs> A bonus income. Um, so what's the job like? Tell people what it's like to be a digital marketer. Okay, well, I mean, one of the things I wanted to sort of go back to is when you said back yet yeah, and everything like that. And I think it's important for people to see sort of the distance I've come. You know, you said about um, being a teaching assistant and everything like that. And that's exactly where I was. Um, but it was always something that I wanted to, I always wanted to use the social media to do more. Um, and it, the school I was in, was that, I was actually in a very, it's one of those sort of moments where something happens and you have to decide to, to go for it. Um, there was an opening in the office in the school I was in. Um, and it was, you know, it was no more money. It was, you know, it was, wasn't social media, but it meant it, I could get into the office, which I think anybody that works in a school knows how hard it is to leave a school environment and go and work in an office or go and do something else because they're like, oh, we're a teaching assistant. You know, that glitter and glue. <laughs> yeah, it is. But there's a lot more to it. Um, and by being in the office, I could then uh, was able to support the marketing manager and actually do some bits for her. And it started off a little bit of photography, then with the event of Canva. And I also got I really enjoy using Canva. Um, so I was able to do designs for the school. So that's sort of how it moved on. But that then gave me the experience so that when a job came up, like the one I'm at the moment, 
I actually had the confidence to go for it. And I think using the word yet is very good when you're applying for roles, because I think us women are very good at saying, oh, I haven't got all of that requirements so there's no point you know you know there's an awful lot of requirements that you have or maybe you haven't got them quite yet but you know once you get through the door you can you can attain them um, and that was something that I used when I applied for this job because it was quite terrifying um, I will say because it's a marketing job I actually used Canva to do my CV and branded it all up with their colors and their fonts and everything Hi. and I know that what I know that that got their attention and because the lady that interviewed me she goes when your CV landed on my desk I was like oh my gosh <laughs> so it's worth the effort ladies and that, that's um, actually something I mean just on a side note that's one of the bonuses we have is the branding bonus right from the yeah. get-go because what we learned is if people understand branding it takes everything to a whole new level professionally and I just love that you branded your CV to match yeah. the brand of the business you were going into, which is, that is so cool. Yeah. Okay, tell us more, keep going. I just yeah. think that's a super cool pause there yeah. for a second. No, well, I think, it's, I think it's worth highlighting because when you do a CV in Canva, it does take a long time because, you know, it's not just typing a Word document, but it's worth the effort and it rises, it, it pushes you above the other applications that are a Word document. Um, anyway, yeah, so that was a marketing and media assistant. So I joined the local it's our local hospice um we deal with palliative care and care um for people who have long-term uh, medical conditions or illnesses um it's uh considering the subject that we deal with it's an amazingly supportive happy place um and that's one of the things that i love shouting about on the social media making people aware that it isn't a scary place people don't it's not just a place of where people come to die it's a it's an incredible place but anyway um so I joined them and I think that was in the February and then in the um November they created a new role which they threw out to everyone which so I applied and I think I wouldn't have done that and it's you know the, the fact that I thought I could even do it um so it's digital marketing officer um, so I applied for that and got it, <laughs> even with this menopausal brain in my interview going, uh, I can't remember what you said. <laughs> um, but um, I now work as a digital marketing officer, but I actually, I'm part of the communications team, but I'm like the liaison with the fundraising team. We have like seven fundraising teams um, that have to have all their own social media, all their own designs done, their leaflets, their flyers, their posters, their social media posts, videos, all that sort of stuff. So I work as liaison with them. So they come to me, um, we work out what they need, when they need it by, and then I go to the communications team and we work out who's doing what and how we're going to achieve that for them. Um, and it's going really well and I love it. It's manic, it's really full on, um, but it's so varied um, and I get to be creative. I get to take my camera to events and record that. So I get to have my camera in my hand, do what I love, but I also get to do all the creative side of stuff. And I'm learning every day all the different aspects of it you know I'm going to meetings um, and sitting in meetings and talking what I'm doing and I still don't feel like I know what I'm doing but I'm obviously giving off the impression that I do because um, it's been very well received um, yeah I love it um, it's really nice to sort of have the balance of the two it is quite hard sometimes to get the balance right but no I love the photography and I love being able to bring those skills that I have to another role so at the hospice which again is supporting people in the local community that there's every I love everything about this story. I just I just do. And it just I always know that people who show up, do the work, they're going to get the results. I do. It just <laughs> always works out. What's fun for me is seeing how it works out is I, you know, yeah, it must be conversations, you know, years and years later when you go, you know, it all worked out because the important yeah. thing to understand is the mentality change that we make, the the, the mindset changes yeah. that we make, um, especially from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And dealing with, you said, like you said, the automatic negative thoughts, the ants, as we learn to deal with those, squash the ants and, and, you know, start thinking with a growth mindset, it doesn't just affect like you for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. It's months and years. I mean, it, and it changes not just your life, but the lives of people around you. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, it, you know, at the end of the day, my boys see me, you know, getting better jobs going out and working they see you know people come you know it's it's stuff you know they're they're nearly or they're adults nearly which is really scary um but they they see my stuff that I put out they see what people say they take the mick out of me as teenage boys will do but I think they sort of appreciate and they understand how hard I work and how hard I strive to do more um and I think 
my what I was saying, like you said, growth mindset, my growth mindset now enables me to help them think about how they want to do things and what they want to do and where what direction their life can take. And also not saying, well, this is the cho- the path you've chosen. So that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. And I think that's really key. I mean, I trained in hotel management. So my qualifications are um, hotel management. <laughs> then it's banking. Then it was IT. Then it was childcare. <laughs> so the variation of my career is is quite huge. And making my children realise that that's a possibility for them, even if they choose this direction, doesn't mean they can't go off in another bit. I'm very jealous of my eldest at the moment. He's, I mean, just finished his first year at university. And he's doing uh, digital uh, film production. Wow. <laughs> so I <wanted> to do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort of incredible to sort of see that. And my youngest, he had lots of struggles at school and he's he's excelling now. He's left school and, it, and it's wonderful. So it's yeah, it's definitely affects everybody around you when you sort of get in that sort of headspace. Yeah. And it's a way of thinking and it's a way of practicing being. And I think, mm. um, you know, that's the biggest the biggest change in terms of what I've seen is not just about the women we work with, but it's the impact it has on their families and the next generation, mm-hmm. you know, of thinkers really, you know, you, we, yeah. everything is, you're one thought away from changing your life, you know, and it's just mm-hmm. about recognizing the thoughts and knowing how to change them. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I, this, I knew this was going to be a really fun interview and I'm so grateful that we got to do it because I've just watched you over the years, just, go from strength to strength. And I think one thing you said that's really important is that you could, you kept putting yourself forward for opportunities, you know, as Mm -hmm. they came up, even if you didn't have all the qualifications or you felt like you didn't know how to do everything, you use the power of yet to say, well, I, I don't know how to do that yet, but I, you know, I figured out how to do this so I can figure out how to do that. Right. And so I love that so much. And what I, you know, I think what I, what I take away from this is, you know, when opportunities came up, even if you didn't feel ready for them, you used your growth mindset, you leaned into it, you took them. And actually it's a, it's a stepping stone. Cause even to get to the job yeah. you have now, there was another job in between. And, you know, as you're working your way th- through this, yeah. you're taking, taking action, s- focused on the vision. And like you said, you have many, many vision boards, right? This is, you, had, you started with one, but you know, so yeah. tell us what's, so this is my final sort of question, if you will tell us what's on, the vision board now, you know, and th- that you're willing to share, you know, sometimes you want to yeah. keep some of the dreams safe and, you know, for a little while longer, but the dreams that you'd be willing to share so that when we have a conversation 10 years from now, we can, uh, you can tell me what life's like all, all about. So what's on, what's on the vision board now? Okay. Well, I've got obviously some serious ones and some silly ones. Um, but my, one of my serious ones that I want to do, and so if anybody follows me on LinkedIn, they'll know that, um, one of the things I want to try and achieve is to, um, get some of my work written you know published or you know in a magazine or anything like that so that's something that is my goal and one of the things I did with that was um it was one of the things I wanted to do and I thought well let's make it reality then even if I'm just writing it for myself so I wrote an article about virtual photography I mean it hasn't gone anywhere but it's all I've written it so I've actually made it a reality so hopefully that's something that can change in the future um I've put on there that I want to be one of the things we talk about quite a lot is being seen as an expert so be in the position where I can actually talk about what I do I mean and a very small step towards that is a couple of months ago I went um to a local junior school and did a photography presentation to year five and year six and I figured that if I could do that to 60 odd children uh, and keep them engaged and present um and I did and I loved it I was terrified and I thought, why am I putting myself forward for this? You know, I've booked time off work to go and do this. And I'm like, I'm making myself more stressed. But again, I, I re- you'll see it on my um, social media. I recorded a video after I came out of that. And I was just on cloud nine. Um, the other thing, I think I've lots of the vi- things on my vision board are like travel. I want to do more travel. I want to look, spend more time in Italy. It's amazing. Um, I want to move house potentially or sort this house out um and then the other the funniest bit <laughs> which hopefully I'll have by this time is a pair of um Louboutins you know with the red heel and the red sole <laughs> so they're on there so hopefully I'll be able to show you those <laughs> oh my God. I reckon I've made it when I, I can afford those <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, so I'll know. I know I've made you, and I can afford that. <laughs> I just won't wear them. <laughs> wear them to oh yeah, well, I think that's in not, a couple of years. Ago. It'll, it'll go into the grass. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, well, you've got you've got a lot of people who are loving listening to this. Um, Claire Louise says, I love everything about this. The happiness is infectious. Well done on what you um, love and uh, uh, doing what you love and, and doing it well. I love that. <laughs> Lindsay, who's also a tech pixie, she says, Jane, you're an amazing woman and have infectious happiness. I absolutely love that. And you've inspired Nicola, who says she's a TA at the moment, but she's looking to change direction. Inspirational. And Claire says, so lovely to watch this. And very inspiring. Thank you. And of course, Emrita says, Amrit says, love your energy, Jane. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, you are infectious, Jane. And, and, you know, that's, that's one of the wonderful gifts that you have. Yeah, it's certainly something that I know that this is another thing that Kate keeps telling me. Um, Cause I know majority of people when they want their photo taken, they know they've got to do it, but they don't want to. It's scary. I mean, I don't like being in front of a camera, believe it or not. Um, and so I completely get it. But every woman I've worked with has always said that they've had a laugh and we've had giggles and it's been fun. Um, and I hope, I mean, Kate always says to me, that's my unique selling point. So, so this is it. <laughs> so hopefully, but yeah, I think everybody has fun and we have a laugh and it's not serious. Um, and that allows me to get the best out of people. So yeah, and I love when I see photographs that I've taken used on social media. I mean, every time yours pops up with that lovely pink jumper, I'm like, yay! And then, you know, I had, um, yeah, Leanne um, in... Um, Portugal one of she started using one of her shit photos and I was like yeah it's just like every time well, I see it I just get that <laughs> Yeah, and to your point, I, that photo has actually been in the national papers. So and you know, yeah. so there you go. So absolutely, like it's you've got. Look, I just you know I am looking forward to. Let's just book in another call. You know, let's make it not, <laughs> not make it five years, but let's book in yeah. another call to um, see where this goes. It's going to be so exciting. Um, Louise Bailey says, "Love all that you've said," and Carla says, "Lovely to listen to you talk, Jane, and how you've developed in your career. Your infectious smile and determination really shine through." Oh <laughs> well, we've got to end this call, otherwise we're just going to get inundated with all these amazing, beautiful comments. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your story. I think it's a story that certainly anyone who's a TA thinking about changing careers needs to hear, you know, you were great at what you did. You loved it, but you, there was something else you wanted to do and that was in your heart and you yeah. followed that. And, um, you know, so important. <laughs> Claire Louise says she can't wait to see the shoes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Well, there you go. We've got a date with Jane's shoes. All right. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Wow. That was amazing. Um, I feel so honored and blessed and grateful to get to spend time with someone with so much energy, so much happiness, uh, dare I say, so much joy. Um, that was just Wonderful. And of course, we share a love of golden retrievers, Jean and I uh, do, and um, and also that in digital marketing and good branding and, you know, just good business, right? Jane is an incredible business owner. She takes care of her people. At Tech Fixies, we take care of our people too. Uh, so if you're interested in social media coaching, you're interested in business coaching, you're interested in life coaching, we have three amazing programs that we can help you no matter where you are in your life. If you want to, if you don't know what you want to do next, Life coaching is the route for you to try and figure that out, navigate that. If you already have a business idea, um, but you uh, don't know how to get social media up and running, start with social media. Or if you want to become a social media manager uh, like Jane, she's a, she's a digital marketer. Like her job description is digital marketer. And that's an incredible job. It pays really well. It's a great opportunity. That starts with social media management certification. And if you've got social media, and you, but you've, you're, you, you're not getting enough sales or you want to get more sales or you want to learn how to build a business off the back of social media, then we've got our business program. But whatever, wherever you are, however we can serve you, we would love to help. It, send us an email at support at techfixies.com. Check out all of our free training programs. We run free training every single month, um, various different programs, our vision workshop, our social media superhero boot camp. Uh, we also have other wonderful opportunities where you can learn our business masterclass, our money mindset masterclass, all sorts of ways for you to learn. So go to techpixies.com to find out more. And again, if you want a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you want to find out what's best for you, email support at techpixies.com. We'd love 
to help you out. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.